Do you still have an emotional attachment to Zeke Elliott? Pfft. Yeah, once upon a time, after his rookie year, I had such an attachment. We did a commercial for Undisputed, and you could see on my nightstand a picture of Zeke. But unfortunately, Jazz, this is a funny, sad question for me. No, I no longer have an emotional attachment to Zeke. Zeke slowly but surely killed my love for him. Just ran it right in the ground, one yard in a pile of dust. Want to know the truth about Zeke's cowboy career when you really stand back and look at it? The harder I look, the more it comes clear to me that Ezekiel Elliott was pretty much a one-year wonder. Seriously, a one-year wonder. His rookie year was by far his best year. Remember the Cowboys went 13-3 and out of nowhere with a rookie back and a rookie quarterback. They secured home field advantage throughout the playoffs to the Super Bowl. They got a week off before their home game, obviously against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, that they ended up losing narrowly. Dak was Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year. But trust me, if you look hard, Zeke deserved that award. Zeke was first-team All-Pro at running back. First team. Zeke led the league in rushing yards, in touchdowns, in carries for first downs, in average yards per carry, and average, obviously, yards per game. These numbers are just extraordinary. They just leap off the page when I look at them. 1,631 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns, 95 rushes for first downs, 5.1 yards per carry, 109 a game. Whew! Now, that was a season, and yet Zeke played six more seasons for my Dallas Cowboys and never topped a single one of those numbers, not a single one. And as you Cowboy fans know painfully well, his yards per game went consistently down each of the next six seasons. Down, down, down all the way from 109 a game in his rookie year to 58 a game last season. Mm. Remember the playoff game that Dak did win against Seattle at home after the 2018 season? Zeke was huge in that game. I always give Dak the most credit, but then I looked and I said, wait a second, he went 26 times for 137 yards? That will work. Which brings me to the following playoff game, which was the beginning of the end of the Zeke I knew and loved. Remember the game against the Rams out here at the Coliseum? This is after the 2018 season. There was one play in that game that became the flashpoint of that game, the turning point, you can argue, of Zeke's career. Remember this one? It's 23 to 15 Rams, so it's an eight point game touchdown, two-point conversion. Cowboys have it fourth and one at the Rams 35 as the third quarter ends, and so they have a whole commercial break between quarters to decide how to attack the Rams on fourth and one from the 35, fourth and one. I had no problem with the choice they made. They made the simplest, truest, rightest choice. You just give it to Zeke up the middle. He runs through brick walls. You want to talk about a warrior? Fourth and one, unstoppable. I don't care if it's Aaron Donald or Leonard Floyd. I don't, I don't care who's up there. For the Rams, they're not stopping him. And they stopped him cold. They stonewalled him for no gain. I was stunned. That was basically the game. Remember, next offseason, Zeke holds out. He's working out down in Cabo, and he came back on time for the season to a big new contract from Jerry Jones that made him by far 
the highest paid running back in pro football. And when the game started, he looked like he was still running in Cabo sand. Zeke hit the wall that he had so often run through. And it's, for me, it just became harder and harder to keep loving a player who could no longer play. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from the Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.